the prompt for my conversation or for this conversation has to do with a, uh, a recent poll that was taken uh, that uh, Liz Nolan Brown, who we'll be talking to in a second, wrote up for reason this was done by Newsweek. But uh, the finding was kind of stunning. Uh, got a lot of play. 44% of millennials want to make misgendering a crime. But let's talk about this poll, uh, Liz, that you wrote up, I think, last week for reason. Uh, 44% of millennials want to make misgendering a crime. And uh, let me just read a bit. Uh, 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 you write, younger millennials were most likely to sword criminal penalties for misgendering with 44% of 24 to 30, uh, 25 to 34 year old respondents in favor and just 31% saying misgendering should not be a crime. Uh, and then you look a little bit older and, you know, the 25 to 34 year olds, that includes some Gen Z. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, millennial and Gen Z, but then some 38% of 35 to 44 year old respondents said it should be a crime while 35% disagreed. Some 33% of 18 to 24 year old respondents, which would be Gen Z said it should be a crime while 48% disagreed. So you have, you know, Liz, to you, the best of your hypothesizing, you know, what is going on that 44% of 25 to 34 year old respondents think that misgendering somebody should be a crime? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, they're not thinking about it. They're not thinking it through. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my most, I guess, hopeful interpretation um is you know people are people are very concerned with trans rights these days they're very um a lot of young people are, you know are very rightfully think that you should you know respect people's pronouns respect people's gender that they consider themselves and they want to signal that so when you're asked in a survey like should it be a crime sure why not you know my, my hopeful I, I i think that's nuts but i may um, be you know, a prison i, I yeah. may be a prison abolitionist but i think this should be a crime yeah I, so but my, my my like hopeful interpretation is that people answer survey questions a lot of times based on a sort of desirability bias so of trying to say what they think is right. And this is a way to signal that you think it is wrong to misgender people. But there's no actual proposal attached to this, right? There's no like, you know, like mm -hmm. here's what the criminal penalties would be. Here's how much, you know, time people would spend in prison or what they'd have to pay. Here's how it would be enforced. There's no discussion about all the, all the you know, unintended consequences um, and things like that. So I, I hope that, you know, if, if this was an actual proposal, people were actually discussing it, the support would be a lot lower than, um, you know, than in a, in a poll where it's just like, hey, is this, yeah. you know, where, where it's more answered almost as if like, hey, is this bad? And people say, yeah, because unfortunately we do have, you know, a, a, we are in an era where people think that like anything bad should be a crime, sort of, at least before right. they think it through. What about, uh, Gene, what do you think? Is there, is, you know, and this poll, you know, it was done by Newsweek. Um, the data is not available online. I looked yeah, around so, for it. We don't even know the exact mm -hmm. questioning, you know, the wording of the question. So all of that, th those are serious caveats, but it seems to comport with a general attitude among, you know, a large chunk of younger people, say people under 30 or under 35, towards uh, not putting up with speech they find uh, ugly or, or uncomfortable. What, you know, what's your read of something like this? Well, what really jumped out at me is that the, the Gen, the, the purely Gen Z, the 18 mm -hmm. to 24 year olds were actually less likely to say that they thought it should be a crime. So yeah, yeah I would love to see that data because that that's an interesting result. Yeah. Um, it might suggest that maybe a corner has been turned um, and Gen Z is like, yeah, of course I don't want to misgender people, but no, it should be a crime. Right. Maybe they have witnessed enough cancel culture that they're over it. Yeah. Um, but you know, because a few years ago, the data we had, we have suggest, you know, it's much more linear that, that the younger you get, the more likely people were, would, would say, no, we would need to restrict speech. The other big political thing that informed, I think, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, the millennial politics, like aside from the whole war on terror stuff was, was like the gay marriage battles. Cause that yeah. was, you know, just when we were in high school and college and that, and, you know, in our early twenties, that was sort of dominating politics, um, all the different fights in the state and all of that. And, um, uh, and, and really driving a lot of, a lot of why, why the, the political how, tribalism. So I think, yeah, yeah, that was very, how, you know, and one thing that's 
one thing that's, uh, you know, amazing. And, and Jean's book goes into this quite a bit that, you know, the younger you are, the more likely you are to be completely comfortable with all kinds of sexual orientation, you know, particularly something like gay marriage. Um, uh, Liz, what was it that, you know, kind of sensitized you or your cohort to that as an important thing? And, and I guess a leading question here, how much of it was it was something that you you and your friends took for granted that your parents were kind of like hemming and hawing about? Mm -hmm. That it was a way of separating you from your parents or one's parents? I don't know. I think a lot of our parents were a little bit opposed but came around about the issue during, during that time. Like I know that my parents um, sort of were like kind of a knee jerk, like, well, no, they shouldn't. And then like, when they thought about it for three seconds, they were like, actually, I don't, yeah. I don't know why I'm opposed. And they, they, they changed their mind over the course of, you know, a, a very short time um, as, as the issue was, was yeah. in the spotlight. And, and so I think that actually that was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, I don't think a generational issue per se. Um, I, mm -hmm. I think it did, you know, it, it did matter a lot that a lot of us had just come up with, with knowing gay people in a, in a way that were out in a way that like other generations didn't. So it just seemed like, of course, you know, this is, this is a thing that should be allowed. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, on the other, on the other hand, it was also sort of just foisted upon us because, you know, Republicans were really using that. Well, bo both parties were really yeah. using that as a wedge issue and a get out the vote. Yeah, issue. I mean, and, and um, it's worth so pointing it's out sort of, that you couldn't ignore it. <laughs> yeah. That people like Bill Clinton, certainly, but Hillary Clinton, even Barack Obama, when he was elected president was, openly against gay marriage mm -hmm. against marriage equality yeah. mm -hmm. um so the the speed with which these old you know kind of uh certainties die is real you know is amazing and there's definitely you know mm -hmm. you can see a lot of that sort of the anger at the system alive and well amongst millennials and gen z depending on you know where you are and what, what the protest is about like i mean we saw a ton of that during during a lot of the you know racial justice protests in, in 2020 and and again before that back in you know 2014 2015 no. so i think i think that sort of anger at the system is still very much alive and and well today i um one of the things i find fascinating is that in the 60s and I have spent much of my professional career trying to be the quizzling of the baby boom generation. Like I, I want to collaborate with Gen X and with millennials and Gen Z to sink the boomers, to get rid of them. I think, you know, the boomers tend to be full of themselves or we are full of ourselves and all of that kind of stuff. But it's interesting to me that in the sixties generation and what came after there was a move to build alternative systems and alternative communities or to challenge the system very forthrightly. So, you you know, people moved to communes, people created alternative uh, corporations, alternative schools. Uh, the Black Panthers are one example of this in the civil rights movement and also the LGBT, uh, you know, the, the gay and lesbian movement, the gay liberation movement, women's lib was like, fuck you, we are going to do our own thing and we're gonna exit and that's how we reform things. And what strikes me as a meaningful change now is that many of the people in, you know, on campuses and millennials, they are actually petitioning the system rather than leaving it or even altering it. It's, and it's almost as if they believe on some deep seated level that the system is there and it is responsive to them. And it has been because when we look at the system, if the system is America, it is much better in terms of race, in terms of class, in terms of gender and sexual orientation. And I wonder if we've kind of reached the limit maybe of where, you know, the the grievances that are being put in front of the system now, the system can't really do much about that. That was an excerpt from my interview with Liz Nolan Brown of Reason and Gene Twangy, author most recently of Generations. If you want to see another excerpt, go here. And if you want to see the full conversation, go here. And make sure to come back every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time when Reason is talking to people with something very interesting to say that you definitely want to hear.